First thing we're looking for is a fundamental difference between matter and antimatter. Now this has been seen in particles called quarks before, but that's not enough to explain why in fact the universe is dominated by matter over antimatter. And our best bet for that is it's something that's rather technical, it's called leptogenesis, but it's connected to neutrinos. Inside Science. Neutrinos are the most elusive particles in the universe. I mean, in fact, there are more, more neutrinos in the universe than there are any other matter particles. But it took um, a number of years before actually experimentalists first detected neutrinos. And it's only really in the last, say, 20 years that we've started to uncover cover the real mysteries of neutrinos and how they actually operate um, and what makes, makes them different from all, all of the other particles. So what we want to do with our experiment is fire a beam of neutrinos and detect them and look for the way they change their flavours and then do the same experiment with the antiparticle equivalents, the antineutrinos. And by doing that we can look for diff direct differences between uh, neutrino oscillations and then for antineutrinos. And by doing that we can detect a fundamental difference between matter and antimatter. The first component is we have to produce a very intense beam of neutrinos which, to give you a sense of the power, to actually generate the number of neutrinos we need, we need about a megawatt of power of protons smashing into a target. So what we do is accelerate many protons, smash them onto a target, and that produces lots of particles, and we let those particles then decay in a 200 meter long tunnel, and many of those particles decay to neutrinos. So if you point your particles in the right direction, in our case, South Dakota, then the neutrinos follow that direction. So in South Dakota, what we're planning to build are very, very large tanks of liquid argon. To give you an idea of the size, each of these detectors is, is roughly the size of an Olympic swimming pool made six times deeper. And we're gonna have four of these detectors. And they're not filled with water, they're filled with liquid argon. When a neutrino happens to interact anywhere in one of these vast swimming pools of liquid argon, what we're able to do is see all of the particles that come out of that interaction. And we are, we're actually able to image them, not in just like two-dimensional photographs, we can basically produce three-dimensional photographs of all of the particles that come out of the neutrino interactions. And that enables us to measure the properties of that neutrino interaction very, very precisely. I mean, this is the remar remarkable thing from my perspective about this experiment. I never thought, in, certainly in my lifetime, we, we would actually be able to do this experiment. So what we're doing is something, that's, uh, something that really probes a fundamental symmetry of the universe. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.